Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I've got something I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do a little short video on this, and I wasn't even going to do it. I was just going to chalk it up as a uh, a little private success. Uh, but I think that's unfair because it's uh, it's I've it's something I've thought about a lot, and I've never really had to go through it until yesterday. And what I'm talking about is a carburetor issue that it comes up quite often, but we seem to always luck out, or I do anyway, until yesterday. Uh, what I'm talking about is when you get a carburetor, this is the one for the TC125 that I was talking about yesterday that I did the overhaul on. Uh, the pilot jet that goes in right here, little bitty jet, and it's way down inside this hole. What happens if you can't get it out? Or if you break the, the slot off the top of it with the screwdriver. Well, in the past, I pretty much considered this whole casting junk because it just, you can't get it out. How are you going to get this thing out when it's way down inside this hole? And I thought about it and thought about it. This happened to me. Uh, let me, I've got a jet here. Uh, I'm going to show it a little closer here in a minute. But you can tell it's very small. It's got the little slot on top of it, and it's made of brass. And in the case of this carburetor, it was all the water that this engine took in came through the carburetor. And it just has this little slot on here. And as I was trying to take it out, it breaks. So now what do you do? Let me uh, let me get you down a little bit closer. We'll talk about it some more, and uh, we'll just we'll go through my journey. Okay. Hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit more of this than what I think you will be able to. Uh, it's a very small jet to start with. Um, you can you can see that uh, it's this one here is a used one and it's kind of chewed up up here too from the screwdriver but it's a very small item and not only is that a problem but it's essentially let's see here if I can get something in there It's that far up inside there. So what do you do? I'm going to kind of take you through the journey I had. And I just, I really didn't think that I was going to be able to pull this off. But I just stayed with it and just kind of was methodical about what I did and I pulled it off. Now you might say it's luck and probably was a lot of it. But I think if you are very methodical about doing this, just about anybody can do it. Now, when this broke, the first thing that I did was I went to YouTube. And I looked up some uh, about what do you do with a broken pilot jet. And the thing that popped up was a gentleman, uh, I don't know where he's from, but... Uh, if you do a search, you'll probably be able to see it too. Uh, he used an easy out. It's one of these type. It's a. It's kind of a. It's a hard. It's it's a heat treated tool that has basically backwards threads on it. So it's almost like a left hand thing. And as you you drill a hole, and it tells you right here on the on the bit to drill it at uh, 
564s. And I tried that first. And I started out by just drilling very slowly the hole that was already in the jet up a little bit at a time, just kept going up to that 564s. And once I got there, I stuck the, the easy out into it and started to back it out, and, or started to, to turn it the way it should back out. And it just would not go. It kept getting tighter and tighter and tighter, which basically meant that it was drawing this easy out further and further down inside. At that point, I was getting worried that it was going to break the casting because this is just, it's probably not even aluminum. It's a, a pot metal of some sort. And it's, I was just afraid it was going to, you know, as this tightens up, it was going to get tighter and tighter until it broke something down in here. So I, I pulled this out, and to pull them out, you just turn them the opposite way. Uh, you just unscrew it, basically, only it'll be unscrewed backwards. So I thought about it a little bit more, <clears throat> and this is kind of the direction I went. Number one, if you start drilling this jet size out incrementally, very slowly, like I said, the first bit that goes in here should be about the same size as the hole that's already in the jet. Just keep going up, a little at a time. And I took and measured right here at the top where there's no threads, and I figured that's about the base size of this item of this jet. So 0.157. So the threads are a little bit bigger, but if I drilled the hole out to basically 157, there would be nothing left except the threads in the threads in this. And then I thought, well, maybe I can get an awl or something and just uh, just chip the stuff out, what's left. That's what I was thinking with this. Just get in here and just chip away until I got it clear of the threads. Well, I'm not sure. I, I tried that a little bit. Uh, I, I was getting some little flakes of metal out of it, but it really wasn't acting like it was going to do the, it, it just didn't think, it, I didn't think it was going to do it. So basically, if you, if you look at this, and it's 0.157, and let's see here. The 0.157 is just a little bit over 5.30 seconds. Uh, you could use a number 22 drill also. That would put you right on 1.157. And what I also discovered was that there's nothing too out of the ordinary about the threading here. I got me a pitch gauge. And I'm going to try to show you the best I can here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. But using the pitch gauge on the thread of a good jet, I was able to determine that it is a 0 0.8 thread or pitch. That's what the, what the metric uh, people go by is a pitch. And if I measured the outside of the threads of the jet, I was right at 5 millimeter. 4.88 is what I'm getting here, but that would be a 5 millimeter. Okay. I went over to my tap and die, and lo and behold, it's a pretty common tap that would be in a, uh, 
uh, a metric tap and die set. And here it is, five millimeter, 0.8. And of course this thing here tells you to use an 1164 drill bit if you're gonna tap that size hole. Well, I didn't do that because I just, I figured the, uh, it was already drilled to that. All I had to do was get the brass out of the existing threads. So the first thing I did was I went over to, uh, I got a piece of metal and it's, it's aluminum in this case. I just, I just picked up something here that I had and it already had a hole pretty close to the size here. So I, I just drilled through it with the uh, 1164, is that what it was? Yeah, 1164 bit. And I took a spare jet that I had and I, I, I just drilled this and tapped it to five millimeter eight or point eight pitch. And it just fits perfect. So, I thought this might be something I can save yet. So, that's what I did. I drilled this out to not 11 sixty-fourths, but 5 30 seconds. And that puts it at point one five six. So just a little bit under what I was measuring here at the top. 1, well, 1565. Five. So at that point, I just, I went ahead and took my tap and put it in there and used a little tap wrench. And I just went at that slowly and backed it out slowly, slowly, slowly until I was able to get um, I was able to get all the threads out of there and I just dumped them, tapped it down and actually before I uh, before I drilled that last 5 30 seconds hole through there I had gotten that hole big enough that this piece falls out Okay, that's the bottom of this right here. And what that does is it, see, you can tell on the bottom that that jet is, it's kind of, it's bigger and it's tapered. That actually screws up to the inside of the carburetor here to, to seal that off so that all the, uh, all the air that's coming through there is coming through these little holes on the side. That's all you're getting through there because it's sealed off here and here at the threads. So that fell out and I thought, well, look at that. And it's drilled smack dab right in the middle. So at that point, like I said, I just went ahead, took my tap and tapped it out very slowly until I got all the threads out of it. And now this one screws right in there. Right there. And I know you can't see in there, but I'll try to. but it's just as it should be. So if you want to say that I was lucky, yeah, probably. Could I do it again? I think so. I think so. I think the, the whole key is not to get in a hurry and just very slowly up the size. If you've got a little set of drill bits, this is a number set. It goes from one to 60. And if you just start at whatever size that jet is, 
originally and just go up very slowly up until you get to that uh, what I guess I would call the nominal size here at the top you can do it I think you can I think I could do it again uh, the the easy out situation <clears throat> I think that will work but it's not going to work every time. I think there's a, probably a little bit more luck involved in that procedure than in this one. But anyhow, that was something I've thought about and thought about every time I bought a used carburetor off of eBay or something. What if that thing is stuck? What do you do? And that's what I did, and it, and it panned out. Now, one thing that I do, if if I'm selling an item on eBay, I always take pictures of the completely disassembled carburetor, including that, uh, showing all the parts laid out on a like a paper towel just like this, so that people can tell that all those parts are removed and can be removed if they buy my carburetor. And then I put them all back in, like you've seen me do before, and I just use a little drop of oil on everything so that they don't gall. But in the case of this carburetor with the TC125, uh, this, uh, this was the culprit. There was, a, there was a piece of hose right here on the end of it, and it was all broken. So it basically had a funnel and if it set outside it was just the water just ran right into here and I'm surprised that this carburetor cleaned up as nicely as it did uh, there were some other little telltale issues uh, that I had noticed and that was basically the pitting of this piece that goes into the slide there was a lot of water that had pitted that and this is something that I went ahead and bead blasted and, uh, and re-plated. Uh, but it wasn't until I got to that pilot jet until I saw the real scope of the damage. Because those things normally aren't that bad. But they, this one here just right away broke off one, one side of the... the uh, uh, slot there and I have I've used this screwdriver for a long time and it I've ground it down I've hollow ground it like you would a gun screwdriver so that it's flat on the bottom and just the right size for these now see this jet is a little loose but if I had a brand new jet then it wouldn't do all that rocking I would spent a lot of time getting that uh, the way I wanted it to fit down into the hole and to be a very sharp edge at the bottom so that that would I'd have every advantage that I could when I remove those but even doing all that I still had one that I couldn't get out and I just I, I just wanted to share that with everybody I know you're not seeing exactly what I did the step-by-step -step thing but I'm trying to show you the best that I can and to tell you that if you break one of these off all is not lost you can do it you've just got to do it slowly and methodically okay guys um, now something I want to tell you about this is I didn't use any fancy tools I used this because it was uh, it was so small and I needed to make sure that my drill bit was in that hole not off to the side of the jet so I used this drill and a set of numbered drill bits you should be able to get those at Harbor Freight or whatever I use use the numbers quite a bit I do anyway uh, for the smaller tap sizes these are usually the drills that uh, they're called for when you're tapping uh, small 
small holes, probably up to five sixteenths or so. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that I did not use a milling machine or the lathe or anything like that on this. Uh, basically, I used those drills, uh, uh, this DeWalt drill, a tap and a tap handle, a uh, thread gauge, and I did have the easy outs already had two different types. I have this type that you drive in, it's got the little teeth on it. And I really didn't think this was the right thing to use because you have to hammer it in. This one tightens up just by uh, loosening it. So this would be the better item, I think, to use. I would certainly try it before I went through all the gyrations I did. But I'm not going to say that it's going to work every time. And I'm not going to say that drilling it out will work every time either. But I believe that if you do what I said, you can get this thing out. And you can, you can salvage that casting. Now, I don't know about some of the newer carburetors, how they're built or anything. Uh, I have seen some pilot jets that are, that are different looking than this. But uh, if it happens, try that. I think, I think you can do it if you take your time. So if it ever happens to me again, I'll take you along on the trip. I just, I, I was thinking about this after I did yesterday's video, and I thought, you know, I could just kind of uh, dwell on this one and make it my own private little victory. But I didn't think that was quite the right thing to do because I'm sure other people have run into this or will run into it. So there you go. Thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.